Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, the thing that sets this image apart is the way it's lit. This form of lighting is referred to as dark field illumination because the field of view, uh, or the background of the field of view anyway, is left dark, even though the whole of the image is actually lit from behind. This works particularly well with things that have a certain translucent quality, like this leaf. OK, so let's go through what I've got set up so far. Uh, I have my table here uh, with a retort stand, uh, which is holding this leaf uh, in this small alligator clip. Uh, I find this a very easy way to do this sort of thing because it gives you a lot of manoeuvrability to get this into exactly the right position. Um, it makes it simple to set the whole thing up. So then moving a bit further forward, I have the camera. Uh, and on the camera at the front here, I have an 85mm uh, 1.2 lens uh, with a small extension tube. Uh, I don't know whether you can just make that out. That will allow it to focus at this distance. On the top of the camera, I have this uh, flash sync trigger, uh, which will also allow me to control the uh, energy of the uh, flashes. The camera is tethered via this cable uh, into Capture One software. OK, so the first thing to do is just to do a little exercise just to make sure that we're not getting any contamination um, from the house lights. So I'll just take a uh, test image. And we can see that uh, at the settings that I have on the camera at the moment, uh, which is 1 250th of a second for the shutter speed, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, um, at ISO 100, uh, I'm using an aperture at the moment of f8. That may well change, um, but this will probably be worst case. I don't think we'll be going uh, to a bigger aperture than that. You can see in the captured image uh, that the leaf uh, is non-existent. That's all dark. Uh, we've got a slight highlight uh, from the alligator clip, which is holding the leaf, uh, which is just due to the uh, house lights in the studio. Uh, as we will be removing this, uh, that's not going to bother us at all. OK, so with that exercise uh, complete, uh, it's time to put in uh, a light. Here we are. So I'm just going to be using this uh, Profoto D2 monoblock uh, studio flash uh, in conjunction with a 2 foot by 2 foot uh, softbox. So if I just spin that round into position, something like that, there we are. So the idea here is that uh, this uh, is uh, parallel to the plane of the, uh, the camera. Uh, and it's also parallel to the plane of the subject in this case, seeing it's a fairly flat subject. Uh, this will provide um, all the back illumination uh, that we need. So with that in place, what I'm going to do is just take a test image. Just a, an arbitrary flash setting. OK, and you can see from that that um, that is fairly well illuminated. Um, but it's not really what I wanted, because the background here is all white. Uh, and I want a dark background. OK, so in order to make the background dark, what I'm going to do is use this piece of card. And I'm basically just going to put that in front of the flash here to give me a uh, dark background for the, uh, the field of view that the camera can see. The rest of the flash around here will illuminate um, the subject, hopefully. OK, off we go. There we go. You can see from that that um, that's reasonably successful. Uh, but you should also be able to see, if you just watch the numbers at the top of the screen here, that the black isn't actually black. There's an awful lot of flare. Uh, and that flare is caused by the light coming from here and going directly into the lens of the camera. Uh, so there is a way that you can uh, mitigate that, and that is to use a thing called an aperture mask. 
Here we are, this is an aperture mask and it's basically just a piece of card which I've attached to this piece of wood so it'll stand up on its own. Uh, and the idea with this is that you just place it uh, in between the camera and the subject. Now you'll have to position this fairly carefully from side to side so that um, one, it's cutting out uh, all of this uh, background here, but two, you can't actually see it in the camera. So I'm just going to uh, have a go at positioning that. So looking through the viewfinder, I'll just move that around until it's about in the right position. There we go. I think it's about there somewhere. Now you should be able to see that basically what we've got now is a, a bit of a sandwich. Uh, you have uh, the softbox at the very back, then we have the black background card, then you've got the subject, uh, and then you've got your aperture mask. So if this is in anything like the right position, it should stop um, all of the excess light from this softbox entering the camera. So we'll give that a bit of a try and see what happens. There, and you should be able to see there's a, a marked difference uh, between this image with the um, aperture mask in place and this one, the previous one, without it. There we go. So while I'm here, I will just have a little look around the image and we'll check the focus. Yeah, that looks okay to me. It's starting to go out at the edges here. Uh, and we'll just see what's happening with the stem. Yeah, the stem's getting a bit soft as well. So what I might do is just increase the aperture just to give me a bigger depth of field. So I'll go from uh, an aperture of f8 up to 16. Uh, now that's a change of two stops, so I'll add two stops of energy uh, to the flash. There we go. And we'll fire that again. There we go. That's much better, I think. Let's just zoom in and have a little look. Yep, that's much better at the top there. And better on the stem too. Good. OK, so that's our um, base image uh, captured. So the next thing we need to do is just address um, the clamp that you've got in here. Uh, now, in order to uh, get rid of that, what I'm actually going to do is just take another image of the leaf, but I'm going to put the clamp in a slightly different position. Therefore, I can use those two images together in Photoshop a little later on uh, to actually get rid of the clamp altogether. OK, so I'm going to very carefully adjust the clamp without actually moving anything other than that clamp. There we are. OK, we'll just take another image. There we are, and we've got our clamp in a different position. The leaf is in a different position as well, but that doesn't really matter. It's just the little bit of the stem that I need. OK, so with those elements uh, all captured, uh, now it's time just to go into Photoshop to do the post-production. So here I am in Photoshop, uh, and this is uh, the first image that we took, and then this is the second one where I moved the clamp. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a uh, stack of these images. So just go to File, come down to Scripts, load files into Stack, add open files. Click on OK. So there we are, we can see that we've uh, now got uh, each of the images on a separate layer down here. So if I just go to uh, the top image, which is this one here, uh, and change the blending mode to uh, screen, for instance, that will allow me to see through it, in effect, so that I can see the, uh, the lower image uh, in order to line it up. So selecting the bottom one, 
Uh, do make sure that you've got auto select here at the top uh, turned off. If you have that turned on, it will automatically select the top layer every time you want to move something, which can be slightly annoying. So make sure that's turned off. Uh, and then selecting the bottom one, that will allow me to uh, move this image around. Okay, so I just need to do a bit of uh, transform on that. So I'm just going to come down to transform and rotate. Uh, I'm just going to bend that round a bit. And bend it around a bit more. So what I'm trying to do here is just line up the two images. There we are. That looks reasonable. Just click OK. I'll just zoom in just to see how that looks. Yeah, it just needs nudging over ever so slightly in the area where the clamp is. Uh, so I'll just do that now. There. So in this area where the clamp is holding the stem, these two now line up um, pretty well. So with that done, I'll change the blend mode back to normal on the top layer, like so. Uh, and what I need to do is just add a layer mask to this. So if I just click on this icon at the bottom. Now I should be able to paint away uh, this clamp and it will leave the stem intact because it will pick up the other piece of stem from the one that's underneath. So painting in black with a brush. Let me just get that to a reasonable size for this operation. There we go. There we are. We'll just paint that out and there it is gone. OK, so having removed that small part, if I just zoom back out again now, uh, I now need to just remove the rest of this and the easiest way to do that um, would be just to literally add another layer on top of here uh, and paint in black. So I'll just add a layer uh, we've already got black selected. Uh, my paintbrush is probably going to be a bit small, so I'm going to just make that a bit bigger. There we are. And we'll just get rid of all the various bits around the edge that we don't need, and the rest of the clamp. Make that a bit smaller as I get closer to the leaf. There we go. So now we have a completely floating leaf. Right. Uh, so I think the next thing I'd like to have a look at is uh, just to look at a, uh, a crop. So if I just go up here to crop, I usually use a ratio of 16 by 9 uh, because it fits the video quite well. Um, but for this sort of subject, I think you could probably get away with a, uh, a square crop just as effectively. I'm just going to make that a bit bigger, just to give me a bit of space around it. Something like that. And I'm just going to use this content aware at the top here, which should fill in all the spare space um, with black. I'll just click on that. And we'll just say OK. And there we go. So by using this dark field illumination, you're able to create an image which has lots and lots of detail in it. If I zoom in to this, uh, you can see the level of detail that we've been able to capture. Uh, and that's mostly down to uh, just being able to illuminate it in a proper manner. That sort of uh, illumination has suited this subject very well, I think. Uh, and we've ended up with uh, what I think is uh, quite a nice image uh, of this leaf. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I've been able to do that. 
Uh, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.